Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Near Mint Condition and today I'm going to show you my haul for June of 2018. Please stay tuned! First things first, a couple shout outs to some of my friends and viewers that bought me some things. Uh, Devil Man came from Jess Bragg, my buddy the Omni Dog, who is one of my co-hosts on Omni Bros Live. This is Go Guy series from the 1970s. Um, it's about a kid that turns into this demon creature known as Devil Man, and he has all these superpowers. Um, I'm surprised that they decided to release this. This is brought to you by Seven Seas. It's a hardcover edition. I guess because of the popularity of Cry Baby Devil Man, perhaps is the reason why they decided to bring this. But this is what I wanted to show you guys: the color pages here, towards the beginning of the chapters. This was never printed in America. I think the only thing that they printed by going to guys earliest stuff was Cutie Honey. And that was done by Iron Fist Comics, I believe, when they were still around. None of this stuff here was ever seen in America. So It's really cool that they decided to do this. I read Volume 1, and I'm really, really hoping they collect more of this stuff. Perhaps some Messenger Z. That would be great. Next up for my buddy J-Rocks, who has his own YouTube channel. J Rocks. This is the IDW printing of the Zodiac Stone, which was kind of a crossover between Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. It was originally released in Europe, I believe it's in Italy, and in the early mid 90s is when this was released. I have not read any of this stuff. I'm upset that IDW canceled or at least put their timeless tells in hiatus. That's Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and Uncle Scrooge. I'm pretty upset about that, but at least. We get this here, and we get all 12 chapters in one book. So, that's nice. Hoping to get more of those hardcovers, though, IDW. So, come on. Next up is Inside Mobius Part 2. This came from the very generous Jimmy Owens. Thank you once again, Jimmy. You are a great man. Uh, this is the art of Mobius. This was published by Dark Horse. Dark Horse now owns the right to, I think, most of Mobius stuff. Yeah, there's blueberry right there. That's cool. Uh, I wish they would print this stuff. But we've had an inside, uh, or the art of Adina, and then we've had an inside of Mobius part one, and I think there's a part three coming out. So hopefully after that, we'll get more of the Mobius comics that were never released here in America. I have never seen some of this art. It looks really bizarre, but yeah, this is uh, characters from Edina, and there's blueberry. So I'm hoping they'll print that. That would be cool. So once again, thank you, Jimmy. By looking at this haul a little bit, you can kind of tell the 90s are represented here. And I don't know why, honestly. It's kind of crazy. Maybe they just all came out at the same time. So we'll start with the Fantastic Four. This is the Epic Collection number 21. Uh, this is probably my favorite Fantastic Four Epic Collection that I own. Because this contains my favorite three-part story, which is the new Fantastic Four. When Reed Richards, Johnny Storm, and Ben Graham are believed to be dead, Sue Storm forms a new team of Fantastic Four, and that is Wolverine, Ghost Rider, Spider-Man, and the Hulk. And holy shit, I love this stuff. This stuff is drawn by Arthur Adams, and again, written by Walter Simonson. Unfortunately, it only lasted three issues. Then we have the annual here, which is a part one of the Cor Corvax story, I think. The Corvax quest? Corvax quest. Um, but that's all we get. Uh, we also get issue 350, and once again, some of my favorite Tom DeFalco and Paul Ryan, the late Paul Ryan stories here, with the uh, fight with the New Warriors, and this right here, leading up to issue 358, which I remember <laughs> buying this issue purely because it was a die-cut cover. So the cover came open, and then the four stayed here, and this is what you get. But this is the introduction of Lyja which is the scroll that Johnny Storm married because he thought he was marrying Alicia Masters. If you have not read this stuff, this is awesome. I don't, I mean, it's 90s, but it's so good. I love this stuff. And we get a lot more Arthur Adams art in here too than I've seen in other epics. There's more Paul Ryan, but there's a story back here that is written by Walter Simonson again and drawn by, there we go, Arthur Adams. And this came out of a Marvel holiday special. Yeah, Marvel holiday special. So once again, Arthur Adams. God, I love that man's artwork. I just wish he was a little bit faster. We get extras in the back. Like 
original art pages here from Arthur Adams during the Fantastic Four and character designs. Another book to represent the 90s is the Thor Epic Collection number 23. This is right before the Heroes Reborn when Image, uh, who was writing Thor at the time? No, it wasn't Thor, he was just in Avengers, when Image decided to buy the character. But this kicks off with the Warren Ellis stuff, the World Engine, and one of my favorite runs, the William Messner Loeb's run. Uh, he is a very underrated writer. He is the guy that wrote uh, Artemis into the Wonder Woman mythos. But I really enjoyed his run here. Uh, so this story ends, and it all, yeah, it also contains all four parts of the first sign crossover, unlike the Captain America Mark Wade omnibus, which just contains the Captain America part. Um, so when this run ends, Thor is sold over to Image for twelve for for a year. Then he comes back in Heroes Return, which is written by Dan Jurgens. Um, but then Journey into the Mystery continues, and I believe there's a collection of that, which surprisingly I don't own, because some of that stuff was drawn by the Mike Del Tato Jr. Studio, which introduced us to Ed Ben S. and a couple of other artists that are still around, and then you get the Thor Legacy. Continuing the 90s goodness is Venom, the Ven Omnibus. Actually, it is called the Ven Omnibus. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to do a video of what is included in here. It will probably come out this Sunday if you want to watch it. It's got great artwork by Ron Lim and Mark Bagley. And Kelly Jones even does some stuff in here. But yeah, if you want to watch what's all in here, stay tuned to the channel. It will probably come out on Sunday. More of that 90s goodness is the Batman Nightfall Volume 3. I've done a video on the kind of overview of all three of the Omnis that have come out. Um... I'm not going to repeat myself, but I'm just still pissed off that they didn't release sort of Asriel in this omnibus format. But this finishes out the Nightfall storyline. So there's Nightfall, Night Quest, and then this is known as Night's End. But it also includes Prodigal and Tro Trochia. So if you're interested in that, just watch the video that I did for this. Next up is Cheese Sweet Adventure. This is the follow-up to Cheese Sweet Home. It's a little color manga. Uh, mainly for kids. I bought this for my daughters, but my wife and I actually enjoy reading this. In the original 12-volume Cheese Sweet Home, it's all about how this little cat is trying to make her way back home. And now she is back with new adventures. It's an adorable little tale. If you like cats, if you like cute little quick-to-read manga, or if you've got kids, I definitely highly recommend this. Next up, we have Avengers No Surrender. This collects the 16-issue story written by Mark Wade, Al Ewing, and Zeb... Jim Zub. That's who... Oh, it's right there. It collects Avengers 675 to 690. This leads up to the Jason Aaron run. I absolutely love this story. This is my kind of Avengers story. It's awesome heroics and villains that are coming to Earth to destroy it, and the only heroes that can stop it is pretty much every damn Avenger in the history of Avengers, just about. I love this story. Uh, there's a mystery that's in there, but I don't want to give too much away. And I believe we're going to talk about this on Omni Bros Live, too. But let me show you what the inside dust jacket looks like. It's just that beautiful Mark Brooks cover. So that's pretty cool. So here we have Batman Volume 2 by Tom King. And that cover is by David Finch. But it's got a ton of other artists. Let me show you what the inside looks like here. Uh, looks just to be the David Finch cover. Yeah. That's all that is. So this contains Batman 16 through 32 and annual number one. Uh, it also collects, well, I guess part one and part three of the button. And this is I Am Bane, which is an, one of my favorite storylines in Batman by Tom King. I thought it was great. I didn't see a lot of the twist coming, so let me not flip too much through there. It's got great art by David Finch, who I usually tend not to really like when the comic is dialogue heavy but he kind of does a really good job here and of course the the big proposal which we know as of batman 50 what happens and if you don't know it's everywhere on the internet right now and here's some more of that gorgeous artwork by clay man jason fabuk and mike michael jenning i believe is how you say his name uh, who you did the stuff in Nightwing and is a damn good artist. And let's look here at the back because I think there's probably some, yeah, there's some variant covers right here. Um, 
That's Tim. Gosh, that's a weird Tim Cell looking cover. No, that's all Tim Cell. I guess that's who primarily did those. And then that's Oliver Cop Copiel. Oh, that guy's artwork is still killer. So, speaking of Oliver Copiel, here is Legion Volume 2. This is by Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning. I showed Legion 1 in my last haul. This pretty much just collects Legion Lost uh, 1 through 12, which was previously collected in a hardcover format. And it was a standard edition hardcover format, so really all DC had to do was just put it in trade paperback. Uh, this is early, early Oliver Copiel artwork and inked by Andy Lanning. So that's really, really cool that you get to see Andy Lanning and Dan Abnett work on early cosmic stories. And I hope they continue with their collections with Volume 3. So, come on, DC, don't you dare cancel this series. Keep them coming. Next up is The Astonishing Ant-Man. I have not read any of this. Uh, of course, the cover's by Mark Brooks, who just tends to do covers. Nick Spencer is the writer on this, and a gentleman by the name of Ramon Rosanas is the artist. I've heard a lot of good stuff about this. I was a big fan of Deadly Foes of Spider-Man, and apparently it's written that way. So I'm curious to see if the hype lives up. So I think this is another book we'll be talking about on Omni Bros Live, too. But here's a little bit more of that artwork. It's pretty solid so far. Yeah, if it's anything like Deadly Foes of Spider-Man, I'm sure I will enjoy it. Here's the final Wonder Woman by George Perez, Omnibus Volume 3. The inside is nothing to all at. And I've done an overview of all three of the George Perez Wonder Woman Omnis. So if you're curious about this book, just watch that episode on this very channel. Speaking of episodes to watch, I also did one on the Miles Morales Ultimate Spider-Man run by Brian Michael Bendis. Um, I can't go on and say much more about Sarah Pacelli's artwork. I fell back in love with her stuff. And I'm now, I'm really, really excited to have her on Fantastic Four with Dan Slott. So I just found out the other day, actually, when I posted this video. So really excited about this. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this. I read this in two and a half, three days, and I couldn't put it down. I know that I'm usually a Bendis hater, but I was really uh, taken back by this. I really, really enjoy the character of Miles. And as some of you may know, I went to Spain and France on vacation with my family. Uh, over there, I picked up um, Osama Tezuka's Anthologia, which is just an anthology collection of his books, of his stories. They had a beautiful Phoenix. I did a video if you want to see what the collected editions over in Spain and France look like. They are quite amazing and years ahead of our stuff here in America. Um, I almost bought the Phoenix collections because they had tw uh, 12 of them, but number two was missing. So that's what kept me from buying them. This looks to be like Tezuka stuff uh, from different parts of his life, just based on his artwork alone. But Tezuka is known as the god of manga in Japan. He's the guy that created Astro Boy, Kimba the White Lion, Unico, Wonder 3, Black Jack, Buddha, Phoenix, and so much, much more. And the gentleman only lived to be 60 years old. And he did so much in his life. But this is the wonderful Ozama Tezuka's anthology. Um, it's all in Spanish, of course. But that's not a big deal for me because I speak and read Spanish. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping one day that America will have something like this soon. Hell, we're still waiting on the Kickstarter from DMP. Another book I picked up in Spain is Elfos, which doesn't take a genius to translate that. It means elves. Um, it looks like this is one part of an ongoing story. I was reading a little bit about this, or I was reading a, um, a little bit on the plane. Looks pretty interesting, but I just, I fell in love with the artwork. That's really why I picked this up. It's gorgeous, gorgeous fantasy artwork. It's like Dungeons and Dragons or Lord of the Rings, but I've kind of always been a sucker for that kind of stuff, even though I don't play Dungeons and Dragons, but I do enjoy the shit out of Lord of the Rings. And my main book that I picked up in Spain, Torpedo, 1936. Uh, this is the Spanish edition, all collected in here. Sadly, IDW had this about five years ago. They had this solicited on Amazon. 
the English translation of this wonderful book. And I got hyped up about it because I started reading about what it was and I really wanted it. But in the end, they decided to cancel the project and now it's sitting on hiatus. Maybe one day they'll pick it up, but it doesn't matter. I'll just read it in the original Spanish the way it was written. Kind of funny though, because it takes place in New York in 1936. So I don't know why IDW decided to cancel it. One of my favorite books I picked up is nothing but an art book, but this is such a cool limited edition. I absolutely love what Dark Horse did with this. So Dark Horse released two limited editions before that were just leather bound. But this particular limited edition of The Legend of Zelda looks like a Nintendo cartridge. So it pulls out. And just like a Nintendo cartridge, there's the sleeve. But not only that, there's the instruction booklet. This is really, really cool. It's like a copy of the instruction booklet. And if you remember Rob telling stories when he was a kid, this is the kind of stuff that he would get his mom to give him before the actual present. So that's really, really wicked that they did that. And here is a look at the actual Legend of Zelda encyclopedia with its gorgeous gold layer. Like I said, looking like the original Nintendo cartridge. Absolutely blown away by this limited edition version of this book. Um, just flip through here. Like I've mentioned before, I'm a huge fan of art books. Uh, this is, has maps and it's got a little bit of the graphics and character designs from the different games of Legend of Zelda. The other two books had the character designs and the maps and things like that, but this has items and just pretty much the over the world and the dungeons and the layouts and things like that. Yeah, let's just flip through here just a little bit more and it's got them in chronological order. Uh, here we go. Here is some of the character designs, characters, character relationship trees. Uh, yeah, so if you already own the other two books, um, you obviously probably already own this. Uh, if you don't own the other two books, you may want to purchase them and then see if that's your cup of tea. See if this is your kind of book. I love the way that this stuff is written. It's all historical. They get really in-depth when these games come out. Good lord, I even mentioned Link's crossbow training. That was the Wii game. Ah, there's Link in Soul Calibur 2. But anyway, nah. What the hell is this? I didn't even know about that. So, yeah. I love these books and looking forward to looking through this with my wife because she's also a fan of Legend of Zelda. And that was my haul for June of 2018. I'd love to know what you guys bought or what you're planning on buying in July. Please leave a comment down below. If this is your first time watching this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe button if you enjoyed what you saw. Again, this was Omar from Near Mint Condition. Don't forget to check out our weekly show that usually comes out every Thursday and our live shows on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great day.